1988, the Cowboys vowed to work harder than any Dallas team in history. They kept that promise. And if sweat had equaled victories, wins would have come in a deluge. The Cowboys were never out hustled or out hit. Miller back to throw. Little pressure. Throw it blocked by Ed Jones. Intercepted by Danny Noonan. Noonan to the five. Danny Noonan with a touchdown. There were more thrills and spills than victories in 1988, but the team remained steadfast and committed. A team of silver and blue grit. A team where second effort became first nature. was a season of learning, a year when the Cowboys crawled before they walked, a time when they stretched themselves to their limits, only to see their reach never quite equal their grasp, and the final record fell to three wins and 13 losses. The year exacted a harsh toll on the Cowboys and their coach. 1988 was the final season for Tom Landry, the architect of America's team and the only coach in cowboy history. Casting giant shadows, Landry strides into the sunset, leaving behind one of the greatest coaching legacies in pro football history. Landry led the Cowboys to five NFC championships and two Super Bowl victories. And while he is accustomed to the magic carpet ride of champions, so too is Jimmy Johnson, who led the University of Miami to the loftiest of heights, an elevation he soon hopes to climb with his new team, the Dallas Cowboys. I'm proud to be the head football coach for the Dallas Cowboys. And I'm excited to be the head football coach of the Dallas Cowboys. I know that there could have been better circumstances as far as me coming into this position, but I would hope that people would be as excited about this organization, about this football team, as what I am. I look up to a man like Tom Landry. I looked up, look up to a man like Tex Schramm. Great people that did fantastic things for not only the Dallas Cowboys, but for the NFL, and for the state of Texas. We need to win. We must win. But we need to win with class, and we need to win in a way that every Dallas Cowboy fan is proud not only of the team, but proud of everyone associated with the team. So that to say our goals are Super Bowls, which is definitive of success, uh, it's beyond that. It's a 10 and 15 year commitment to uh, uh, not only match what we've done in the past, but to uh, make football bigger than life. And I think that's part of what Dallas Cowboys have done. We got to go out each week and be competitive. We got to go out each week and have teams to worry about us. We got to go out each Sunday and play hard. We got a young team. And if you have a young team, you can't go out and play like you're an old vet. Let's go, show, come on! And they hand it to Walker, coming left. And that guard, he's got the five, still going to the three, in for the touchdown. Pallor in the shotgun, a five-man rush, a bullet for Martin in the end zone, a diving... With Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson leading the way, a new day is dawning in Dallas. A new day that promises excitement and a return to greatness. A day that signals the emergence 
of the bright silver and blue lights of victory. We'd like to have a team that's aggressive um, on both sides of the ball. We'd like to have a team that's known as a physical football team, not necessarily a finesse team. When the whistle blows, everybody goes. That was Jimmy Johnson's attacking style at Miami, and that will be the style of the Dallas Cowboys. It will be hit or be hit. Act, not react. And that starts with special teams. Players from every spot on the roster, from starter to super sub, make the special teams truly special. A unit that turns trick plays into exploding cigars. Coming to Texas Stadium will be like visiting a movie set. The stars are glamorous. The games will be thrillers for cowboy fans, but horror shows for opponents. Destined to be the most fearsome of all will be the Cowboy Defense, a unit that fights hard from whistle to gun. Johnson's defense will swarm and storm to the ball, pillage and sack the pass pocket, and erect stone walls on fourth and one. Number 56, Eugene Lockhart, lives up to his nickname, the hitting machine. Number 59, Gary Cobb is a fierce blitzer and produced seven and a half sacks in 1988. Ron Burton's tackles are knockouts as opponents landed flat on their backs. Cornerback Everson Walls is a defensive magnet. Despite offenses directing their attacks away from him, he ends up with the ball anyway. With two interceptions in 1988, the KG cornerback is one good season away from becoming the all-time Cowboy leader. Others swarming to the ball will be Ron Francis, Ray Horton, Manny Hendricks, Billy Owens, and hustling Bill Bates, number 40. Another defensive back with the knack for perfect timing is Robert Williams, number 23 a cornerback who was the biggest surprise of last season. Quarterbacks picked on the unheralded and untested defender, but he exploded to the ball, diffusing long bombs in the process. Robert Williams was a new building block for the defense. The keystone to this fortress remains a physical marvel named Ed Jones. In 1988, Tutal did what he's always done, stuff the run. Then, number 72 kicked up his 37-year-old heels and created havoc all over the field. Another Range Rover is defensive end Jim Jeffcoat, number 77, who roams from sideline to sideline. Number 99, Kevin Brooks, has begun to turn potential into potent and is becoming a force inside. Number 54, Randy White, the ultimate warrior, the ultimate team player, played his last game this season. From Randy White to Danny Noonan, the passing of a generation in the arms race on the Cowboy front four. 
Number 73 is the new master of might and muscle on the Dallas Cowboys. In this form of demolition derby, he may become a tractor trailer among compact cars. He has a low center of gravity, and it's very hard for an offensive lineman to get a hold on him because he can just push him right back into the quarterback, and he does damage when he gets there. Bolstered by this young man mountain, there will be more peaks than valleys for the Cowboys' defense in 1989. They've thrown deep well today. Miller back to throw, no pressure. Now here comes Noonan. He's running. He gets rid of it in the end zone. That's a flag. That's going to be intentional grounding, and it is a safety. I would like to think that I can bring out the very best in a player. Uh, I'd like to think that I can bring out the very best in a an assistant coach or a trainer or equipment man or a secretary to to have the entire organization you know working at a maximum level uh, if we do that then we'll be successful one unit that will work at maximum level will be the cowboy offense which will feature the adventurous wide open breakneck style that is the trademark of Jimmy Johnson touchdowns may come from the legs and arm of Steve Pelour or the determination of Daryl Clack. It must come from number 61, Nate Newton's crushing blocks. Blocks that unlock the door to touchdowns by Herschel Walker. Blocks by tested veterans and eager newcomers will allow the passing attack to strike quickly. While the devastating results of a big play passing attack are familiar to Jimmy Johnson, so too is last year's number one draft pick. The leader of the parade at Miami, Michael Irvin, celebrated his NFL Mardi Gras against the Washington Redskins. Back to throw. Good block from Rafferty. Rolling right. Look at a throw on the run. There's a man in the end zone. It's a touchdown to Michael Irvin. And he turns and bows deeply at the waist and spikes it. On the day, Irvin's six catches added up to 149 yards and three touchdowns. Back to throw deep. He's got Irvin, and it's caught, and Irvin's gone. That one is 65 yards. They snap it, throwing in the end zone. It's a touchdown. Michael Irvin again. Did I tell you to go to Irvin for the third one? Did I tell you to go to Irvin? You know, he really loves the limelight as well. I mean, he loves it. You know, he, he really loves the game of football. He loves the showmanship, and uh, he is an excellent player. I really enjoy the game. I mean, there, there's no, I, I enjoy what I'm doing, and I have fun playing the game. I'm blessed to have a profession and then do the thing that I enjoy most in this world. While Irvin's infectious spirit enlivens the bench, it is his ability to catch a football that quickens the heartbeat. For he has the unusual ability to turn the routine into the spectacular. Sweeney back to throw, has time, now has flushed out right, throws it on the dead run, caught in the end zone, Michael Irvin has a touchdown. Irvin became a fan favorite, as did a core of young receivers that are one of the strengths of this team. There are young receivers still reaching for greatness, and one approaching it in Kelvin Martin, number 83. The five foot nine inch second year receiver accounted for 49 catches, 622 yards, and three touchdowns, one of which was among the most spectacular in the NFL last season.
but for a mix of consistency and dazzling catches, there was no receiver like number 87, Ray Alexander, an unlikely hero who made every conceivable reception. Back to throw on fourth down. Into the end zone. It's a touchdown! An unbelievable catch by Ray Alexander coming across the middle. Boom! But every week, the unbelievable became believable. Lost on injured reserve a season ago, Alexander found himself in 1988 and became the team's receiving leader in catches, yards, touchdowns, and extra effort plays. Back to throw, here's a blitz, he throws it out, Alexander got it at the 10 and moves out of bounds, no still goal. Blitz, Pallor back to throw, throws it up over the middle, and Alexander gets it at the 35, and he's gone. Ray Alexander on a hot receiver blitz pass from Steve Pallor. This angular six foot four inch contortionist escaped from many a desperate situation. He squirted out of tackles and squeezed into the end zone and made the impossible possible. Two receivers right, Malor back to throw in the end zone, up in the air for Alexander. Tip, he caught it for a touchdown. He volleyballed it twice before he was able to bring it in. Now they really bring us up emotionally when they score touchdowns. They do their same little antics that the Bush Johnsons, the Drew Pearsons, and the Tony Hills had when I first came into the league. So it's like the Cowboys took the long way back home again. The same type of intensity, the same type of confidence. They're good for the team and they're very exciting to the fans. Driving the Cowboys to their accustomed place atop pro football is the goal that motivates Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson. Had a, like a nine yard average on punt returns. Uh, really, Martin be a good right player, in. right, from yeah. Boston College. Yeah. Uh, had a good year, but should be really a good receiver in our yeah. offense. You know, everybody needs to be motivated to make any difference if you're an 18 year old college freshman or you're a 35-year-old business executive, uh, you need to be motivated. And I think motivating professional players uh, is as important as motivating college players. Jimmy Johnson is a dynamo, a man on the move, a coach filled with such an abundance of energy and spirit that it naturally spills over to every cowboy. Be under control, be under control, keep those hands up, looking at me, looking at me, now Kim, looking at me, here we go, looking at me, here we go, looking good, looking good. To climb out of the darkness and back into the limelight, to again become a constellation, the Cowboys need shining stars of the magnitude of Herschel Walker. Such a supernova is quarterback Troy Aikman of UCLA, the number one pick in the NFL draft. Many consider Aikman the finest quarterback prospect of the last six years, a player of unquestioned physical talent who can turn ugly plays into pretty touchdowns. A player who combines touch with a rocket right arm, an arm that passed for more than 5,000 yards and 40 touchdowns in just two seasons as a Bruin. The signing of Aikman by Jerry Jones was the aggressive first step in a bountiful draft that is designed to bring Cowboy fans a winner. I want to be a resource for the club and in turn that resource payoff for the fans and uh, putting a winning team on the field. Uh, that resource is obviously potentially financial, but in addition to that, it's management, it's dedication, uh, it's enthusiasm. One must be enthusiastic about the Cowboys cover boy, Herschel Walker, a renaissance man who will try absolutely anything once.
while his pirouette will make no one forget Mikhail Baryshnikov, his movements on a football field cannot be duplicated. Herschel Walker storms into secondaries, and tacklers fall off him like raindrops. Walker, a breakaway threat with breathtaking power, provides the Cowboy offense with a splash of color and a swirl of excitement. And with more than 2,000 yards rushing and receiving, he ranked third in the NFL. Next season, even an Atlas like Herschel Walker will not have to carry the weight of the offensive world on his shoulders. With a new owner, a new coach, and exciting new players, a return to glory begins. A return to the days when opponents fell and championship banners were raised. There are bright signs on the horizon, ones that signal a new day in Dallas.